Internet можно the Internet can be represented as a tree. Its roots are communication channels, connecting everything and supplying it with the information. The tree's trunk is the data center with its cabinets, servers. And finally, its crown consists of its multiple services, websites, emails, telecommunications, networking, money transfer, everything we use through this infrastructure. It is no secret that everything we do in the Internet, uploading there any new content, everything is recorded, and all of it is saved and stored, as a matter of fact, in the specialized memory cells. So behind all the digital space process we find, to put it in simpler words, ordinary computers functioning. They are so many that it is needed to build special facilities called data processing centers, or data centers. Data centers are a widespread kind of facilities, perfectly usual as if it would be banks or grocery stores. People use them daily without even noticing it. Historically, the first data centers in Moscow were open in the premises of the former telephony station, where many different providers contacted between them. One of the main facilities of this kind is MTS-9. Moscow Long Distance Telephony Station was founded in 1978, timed to function during the Olympics 1980. The building is unique. Its designers got the Lenin Prize. It is of 19 stories, which is unusual for DCs. At that time, it was equipped with the best and state-of-the-art Soviet telecom equipment. Then came the moment of digitalization. In 1993, the first digital stations were opened. As fate has willed it, in 1998, new interesting people from Zhukovsky came saying, we want to install here our hardware, just a modest one. We want to try what will come out of it. Would you believe it? All Russian internet originated in this hardware. First telecom service operators, providers decided to create their first traffic exchange station on the basis of M9, using all its advantages. That's why this is a cult station now for all the sector. DCs are different. First come the biggest ones. They are like an enormous shopping center. Such hypermarket DCs are situated in the formerly industrial districts, historically possessing reliable communications, built for plants and factories. Because of this industriality, the estate cost is there low enough. Although such DCs are too much distant from the offices of the companies, which means from the majority of users, and they're not interested in working with small customers. Second ones, medium, club format DCs. They are not big global stores, but rather a kind of corner shop where customers are known and their loyalty appreciated. They are much more convenient from the point of easy access as well as from the point of networking. If you have at least one computer, you need to store your data somewhere. If these data are stored in your office, they are in danger of being lost for some reason, like servers break down or any other reasons. So, the most efficient kind of data storage is the data center. These data are generated not only by you as users, but by cash registers, surveillance cameras, banks and telecom companies. Any electronic device in some way is transmitting its data to the data center. The second step is to ensure the access to the DC. For this purpose, we are cabling and connecting together different DCs, offices, and DCs, different offices. The main point is to ensure this physical chain between points A and B. Otherwise, it would be nothing but a box with some data. But to have a proper DC, we need high-capacity channels. 
That's why we have to build an appropriate infrastructure. This structure in Moscow stretches for thousands of kilometers. The data center is a city inside the city. Every one of them has control rooms. The control room is furnished with frames containing many servers. Every server can be likened to a flat, and every frame to a building. These are homes for your data. The server's capacity is of about 15 or 20 or even 30 home PCs. An ordinary DC consumes megawatts of energy. This is the power consumption of a small or even a big engineering plant. 98% of the power consumption of servers is further emitted as heat. It means only 2% of power is used for computing process. And you need special measures to eliminate this heat impact. Imagine that you have one domestic heater per each square meter of your home and that it's functioning 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Our computers are safely and efficiently working at the temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, maximum 27 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is higher, the CPU is overheated and fails, and it means services you're using Internet shopping, ordering tickets become inaccessible. Even your favorite cat's video is out of the question. So DC is like a big stove that needs constant cooling. The cooling system's working with ambient air eight months a year, provided the ambient air temperature is not higher than 15 to 70 degrees Celsius. When it's too hot outdoors, i.e. 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, we switch on Freon cooling. Total power consumption of our cooling system is 3.2 megawatts. To have the right idea, it is equal to the consumption of 3,000 home fridges. It is crucial for all the systems to work uninterruptedly. In the DCs, we must ensure uninterrupted power supply. In summertime, constant cooling of all the equipment. And we do our best to exclude unauthorized access of violators. Every data center possesses a multi-level security system, protected premises, guards, barred windows, access control. For many DCs, biometric access control is used, functioning with finger or palm prints, or even iris control. Totally, we have here more than 200 surveillance cameras. All the info is gathered in the monitoring room here. In compliance with Tier 3, it is stored here for 90 days. Next main system ensuring operability and safety of the DC, this is firefighting and fire alarm system. 24 hours a day, this system is monitoring the air circulating in the control rooms and in case it detects traces of smoke, not even the smoke but slight traces of it, the alarm system is actuated. The fire warning comes 30 to 40 minutes before the potential fire. All systems are constantly monitored and every one of them has its own regulations. Each of our customers has his demands on to what extent his data must be protected and uninterruptedness of his communication with partners. We as a corporation are highly concerned with this key element of our corporate network. We are realizing the concept of virtual design office. It means we created an integrated info space where all designers and engineers have access to common info resources. Furthermore, we created a VDI system ensuring all data processing to be made by our DC. And it allows us to spare about 30% of time for development and production of any high-tech product.
Key parameters of any DC are temperature, power consumption, current, voltage. Systems differ as regards their components' redundancy levels. The higher is this category, the more reliable is the DC. There are special ratings conferred by Uptime Institute, an American company conferring ratings Tier 1 to 4. In Russia, we have mostly DC certified Tier 3. Tier 3 implies all systems redundancy. UPS, uninterrupted power supply, telecommunication lines, even sockets. In case that the municipal electricity supply fails, diesel-powered current generator is automatically actuated and it supplies us with energy using diesel fuel, solar oil. We have special tanks ensuring this system's working for 24 hours and more. DCs are designed to prevent force majeure problems. For instance, DCs are never built on sites fraught with earthquakes, floods, anthropogenic disasters. That's why a breakdown of a quality DC cannot be caused by anything less than a direct hit of a meteorite or a bomb. And even then, we can minimize the consequences by installing our equipment in two or three DCs instead of one. On the one hand, the DC's quantity and capacity are growing. The number of simultaneous computing operations or the number of servers needed for data storage, but also the requirements towards the equipment are advancing. Centralization and explosive growth rate of the volume of data require more and more large and efficient technological facilities for their storing and processing. Russian commercial data centers include now about 30,000 frames. The speed of modern technology's development is now so high that from the moment the new technology is conceived to the moment of its implementation, it takes not even months, but days. And it's possible that, during the time we spent to film, some of our data are gone out of date. And even, not our children, but ourselves in a few years, when we see it again, the quantitative characteristics and the approach itself to the virtual digital space will be completely different.